Now, your baby sister is going to come. Yes. Now, now, this girl, well, we'll talk about her later, but, but, but right now, I want you all to welcome, at this time, the baby sister of the Clark sisters, yes. Sister Karen Clark Shear. Yes. And she's going to come out now and, yes. and talk with us for a minute. Come on, Karen. God bless your heart. Come on. Yes. Come on, sis. Now, now, look at her. Look at her. She's a first lady sure enough. She just looks like a holy woman. Have a seat, sis. Have a seat. Karen Clark Sheard, the premier, one of the premier voices in gospel music. Yes. Now, sometimes I think God is not fair. <laughs> because some people can just sing any and everything that they want to sing and never seem to get hoarse, right, right. tired. Right. This woman's range is measured in three and four octaves, and right. she has ironclad vocal cords. Right. <laughs> and I don't understand why God gave you so much. You are as prolific singing as, as, a, as, as a concert pianist is playing. It is a wonderful thing to hear and to see you perform, and not just perform, minister the Word of God through song. So, Sister Karen Clark Sheard, we welcome you to TBN tonight. Wow, thank you, Pastor, for that oh, wonderful introduction. You, yeah, you'll, oh, you'll, you'll pay me for it later. That's no <laughs> uh, but you, you have a, a phenomenal gift, absolutely phenomenal. You, you, we hear, the, and, and in, our, in our circle of, 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 of singing, we, we interact a lot with the secular. We see a lot of the secular artists, and they look up to us in many ways. Yes, but when you hear people like Faith Evans, and Missy Elliott, and Monica, and Whitney Houston, and all these people talking about how they've listened to you throughout the years, and you can hear yourself again in these girls, because Faith Evans <laughs> is so similar to your style of singing that it's not funny. How does that make you feel to be that, that, that person that God has used to be able to minister on both sides and effectively re reach them? It's, um, it's really, first of all, it's, it's, in, it's encouraging to me um, to even know that I, I see these people come up to me and they let me know and give me such respect, um, people of their caliber. And... Um, when I hear them compliment me, I'm looking at, wow, you know, wow, God, what, what did I do to merit this? And then I begin to think, when you hear th those encouraging words, it keeps me going because you have no idea what the price you have to pay mm -hmm. to get or to be in that position. And um, when I hear, you know, uh, people uh, such as Faith, of course, we were in the studio together and she began to talk to me. And I felt that that was an open door, Pastor, for me to walk in to minister to her. And, of course, she was raised in the church. And, you know, and I, I don't condemn them for what they do. All we can do is just let them know what the Word says. Yes. And as long as we do that, you know, I think they can take it from there. As, as long as we can be a light. You know, and an and example, ex absolutely. And, and that's what um, it really encourages me because when I know the price that I have to pay or that I had to pay, I'm still paying some prices now. <laughs> People have no idea what we have to go through, right, right. you know, for the anointing yes. to come on stage. And that's important. Oh, I'm telling you, I, I mean the trials that, and sometimes we'd be like, Lord, why, why, oh God, why me, why me, why me? And you have to remember uh, the gift that I called you to do. Everybody can't do that. Everybody cannot uh, s praise God in the midst for an example of a storm. But I can depend on your prayer. Right. I can depend on you when you hit the stage and, and the anointing can fall. I can depend on the anointing to go going forth and you allowing it to take over you and not taking over your gift and right, letting your right, gift right, do the work. Right. But let allowing God to come forth and that that goes in the beginning. It starts with having a foundation and living the life 
Yeah. Mom used to always tell us, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark used to always say, Pastor, you got to live what you sing about because when you get on that stage, it's going to tell. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's going to tell. tell whether you're living right. It's going to come because there's some folk out there who's spiritual and the the scripture says, try the spirit by the fear. There's some folk out there got the true spirit of yeah, God. Yeah, yeah, they can see. You know, so I, I think that's so encouraging to me when I hear compliments of that magnitude. It keeps me going. It, it, it encourages me to, to let me know. It lets me know that my ministry is not in vain. Now, you, you said something about paying prices. See, a lot of people don't, don't understand that these gifts and callings, are without repentance. God gives them and he doesn't repent of them, but there's an anointing that goes with it that doesn't come just by osmosis. It comes from some prices paid. Absolutely. You've gone through some serious situations that almost took your life not too long ago. Tell me about that. Maybe about two and a half years ago, I went into the hospital and when I went in, I'm having a minor surgery, three days, come home, and um, just so happened, my husband called the hospital and said, are you ready for me to pick her? And they say, no, you must come down here. She's turning for the worse. Next thing I know, I'm seeing the doctors pacing the floor in my room, 10 doctors walking in my room. I'm looking at my sister walking, pacing the floor, and she's a nurse. And I'm thinking, uh, of course, Jackie here, she's a nurse. And when I see her, you know, and she's like our mom nurse. She's like um, everything, you know, she's in the field of health. And when I see her, being distraught, I began to be distraught, and I think I panic. And then when I started panicking, that's when I having problems breathing. Then, to make a long story short, um, they tested me. The doctor said, "Take her down to the emergency." They tested me and found out that there was a blood clot in my lungs, mm. traveling towards my heart. And the doctor said immediately, "You were supposed to have a heart attack." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know of a God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He left me here for a reason. Thank you, Jesus. And I found out that sometimes your misery has to be your ministry. Oh, sometimes you have to go through a situation so that someone else know, can know that there's still hope and God is still healing and delivering in this day and time. And, but, but when I think about how... Um, when my husband began to tell me, you know, I had, after they had found the blood clot and the devil was trying so hard, and then um, I went into a coma, and then the doctor said my, I had an infection in my blood, and I stayed in that coma for approximately four to six weeks, and then um, that's when they gave my husband the news. I only had a 2% chance to live. My God. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. 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 And then when I began to think about Mm, thank you, God. The 2% chance. And then my husband, who's a man of God, and he, he went into the chapel of the hospital. And when the doctors told him, he said, that's really all I needed is for, is it, for you, it to be out of your hands yeah. into God's hands. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And then he went into the chapel of the hospital. He, got, he gathered the family, gathered my sisters. And you know, a lot of times you, if you find artists that want to be privacy, my, my husband said, no, no, forget the dumb stuff. We need some folk that can reach God. Yes. Put the word out. We want them to pray. Yes. Hallelujah. And then when the news begin to travel all across the country, people begin, saints of God begin to pray. And I thank you for praying for me. Yes. Because the Bible is right when it says the prayers of the righteous. Yes. Yes. Many folk was calling on God when I couldn't call on him myself. That's right. That's Thank right. you, Jesus. So then after, after that, he, he walked out. He, the doctors was looking for him, and he ran into the doctors, and the doctor said, we don't have no idea what happened, but we was getting ready to tell you to prepare her funeral Jesus. services. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And then when my husband, he said, it's going to be all right. Then the next few minutes, that's when the doctor says, we don't know what come about. But she's come out of this coma. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's because of the God that I serve. Yes. It's because of the God that proves himself to yes. me. It's because of the God that proves himself to be Jehovah Rapha. Yes. He's still a healer. Yes, he is. And I thank him each day. I'm still here. God left me here 
the devil thought he was trying to cut me off. Uh, but I got news for you. You should have called. You should have you should have had me. Oh, you should have took me when you had a chance. Oh, because my praise now is on the next level. Yes, well, we're going to cut her loose right now. Sister Karen Clark, she is minister. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless your holy name. 